What's good, YouTube nights? This is your man TiVo. Welcome to Lords of the Long Box. I got another long overdue new comic book day haul video. Uh, these are mostly new books. I haven't really gotten any old books recently. I've been waiting for stuff to come back from CGC. Speaking of which, I just got 16 books back, 16 slabs back, but I literally have about 40, 50 raw comics, brand new comics that I've gotten. Mostly are variants or special editions or, you know, special covers. Now I'm just not going to show you stuff I'm reading, but I thought I'd show you some school, uh, some cool pickups, uh, brand new from new comic book day. And then I'll probably do another video for, uh, the slab since nobody want to sit through a, a 25 minute haul video. Right. Am I right? All right, let's get right to it. I'm already taking too long, man. So, um, I picked these up because who doesn't like ninjas, uh, spawn 310. Of course, this is a cover of ninja spawn, not his first appearance, but still pretty cool nonetheless. And if you got that one, you had to get the black and white sketch variant, which is pretty darn cool by Todd McFarlane. And then uh, when I got the regular cover too, because I thought this was pretty darn neato. Man, talk about glare. I got such good bags. So that's Spawn 310. And yes, I went down the rabbit hole of X of Swords. Uh, so this is obviously not just last week, but the week before. And uh, we'll get right to it. This is the Miguel Mercado variant, absolutely gorgeous, uh, featuring magic. Um, so this is obviously Exoswords Creation, part one of 22. That's going to be hot. This is the Mark Brooks 1 in 100 wraparound cover. Uh, I'll show you, man. You know what? I don't like taking pictures of wraparound covers, but... There you go. Look at that. Gorgeous. Big fan of Mark Brooks and his work. So that is the one in 100 variant. Pretty cool story, too. I don't want to give too much away. So this is a spoiler free video. Uh, this is the Pepe Larez. I think that's how you say Larez, Larez, whatever, Pepe. This is a two per store variant. I don't know how they figure that out, but they figured people ordered so many of them. They just hand out two per store. So I got that bad boy. Um, and this is X Factor number four, which is part two that just came out this week, I believe. God, it's such a blur. Um, and this is the RB Silva variant, which is pretty cool, man. I'm really digging the storyline so far. So, yep, I'm going to have a bunch of those by the time they're done since there's 22 parts. Um, speaking of which, that was part two. This is part three, and I think this is probably the biggest key that came out this week. Uh, this is Wolverine number six, and this, I don't know, I forgot who the cover artist is. My bad. I can't recognize anybody's signature anyway, anymore. Anyway, uh, this is the first appearance of Solemn, uh, a new supposedly arch nemesis Wolverine since he hasn't had a new baddie in a long time. Um, so the Samurai also appears in this issue. And of course, this uh, is the timeless variance that Alex Ross has been absolutely killing. This is my favorite version of Wolverine. I don't like the yellow suit ver version. I love the brown suit version of Wolverine. This is the Alex Ross timeless variance. He's been doing them for the last few months now. Speaking of which, I'll show you. Because uh, these don't have anything to do with the other ones. This is from FF... Um, what is it called? The... Um, Antithesis. I'm sorry, I got a brain fart there. And this is a dope, dope Silver Surfer, all shiny. So nice. I got it twice. Of course, She Hulk is all the rage right now with the casting news. So I thought I'd pick up the new. This is the new on new ongoing She Hulk series. Another Alex Ross timeless variant. Really digging the Silver Surfers. And since we're talking about Silver Surfers, I've been reading uh, Strange Academy. Really digging it. So I picked up some Strange Academies and, you know, might as well go with this one because you'd be shocked if I didn't get this one, right? Gorgeous, gorgeous Alex Ross timeless variant for uh, Strange Academy number four, I think, right? No, they're on number three. My bad. Because I also picked up uh, these other variants. This is a gorgeous Art Adams. I, they call it the character variant because, you know, they, you know, they uh, highlight each character on the cover. This is gorgeous. Art Adams is one of my favorite artists. This is the Ryan Otley 1 in 25 variant. Let me get in closer so you can get a better look at these. I'm my bad, man. I'm trying to make it good for y'all. Strange Academy number three. This is gorgeous. Look at that. Oh, Ryan Otley always does great work. 
And because printings are all the rage, Strange Academy number one. Yes, the fourth print with these so popular. I would expect a fifth print, but you know, got them for a good price, so why not? It's all you guys' fault. Uh, something a little bit different. Oh, my bad. Let me get some more here. You're probably wondering, where is that one book that came out this week that you're a big fan of? That's going to be coming up next. That's my Shang-Chi, Paul. <laughs> There's a ton of Shang-Chi books. Uh, I really dig this one. Uh, this is an in Yuk Lee uh, variant for Amazing Spider-Man number 49, which is a thick-ass book with a cover price of $9.99. Hey, what's up, you guys? Black covers never do well, by the way. Uh, this is cool, man. I am Neil Gaiman is hands down my favorite author. When I say author, not necessarily comic book writer, but author of novels like American Gods. Um, uh, Where's that other book that I read of his? Obviously, Stardust. There's other great books. So he recently, the most recent novel or that I read that he came out with a couple of years ago was he had a novel about the Norse mythology, basically retelling of the stories that have been around for thousands of years. And it's kind of Neil Gaiman's way of telling the story. Well, they adapted it for the comic books. And this is Neil Gaiman with the uh, PK, uh, P. Craig Russell help uh, with the scripts and art by uh, Mike Mignola, Jerry Ordway, and Dave Stewart. So basically it's three stories. Uh, it's an anthology. And so this is issue one and there's three separate stories. And it basically is a retelling of the Norse mythologies that have been around for thousands of years. Um, this is the regular cover. This is the gorgeous David Mack cover. Really looking forward to this. I'm a huge fan of mythology, Norse mythology, Greek mythology, Egyptian mythology. That's why I really like American Gods, the show. If you haven't seen that, peep it out. Uh, so this is um, David Neil Gaiman's retelling of the Norse mythologies. We're talking Odin, the Yagistral Yagist tree. I can never pronounce that. Norse mythology has some of the worst spellings ever <laughs> if you have problems speaking. Um, so yeah, can't wait to finish reading these. Obviously, it's an ongoing series. So from Dark Horse called Norse Mythology. This is a very cool book. This is a Ed McGinnis 1 in 25 variant for a tribute to Giant Size X-Men 1. And what's interesting about it is it's a basic, it's, it's a, this is, by the way, it's a gorgeous wraparound cover by Ed McGinnis. Thank you, Bruce. And basically it's a panel by panel retelling of giant size X-Men one with different artists, right? So let me see who, uh, I think they talk about all the page one, Alex Ross, page two, Kevin Nolan, page three, Chris Sammy, page four, Marcus Toe, and it goes on and on. So basically 36 pages, 35 different, uh, 30, at least 36 different artists, because some of them are, you know, obviously um, an artist team, I guess you could say. You see all the, and my thing. Well, anyway, you get the idea of it. Stupid freaking autofocus. So that's dope, man. If you ever want to see kind of modern retelling of Giant Size X-Men 1 with a bunch of different artists. And right on the cover, it says right there, tribute to Len, uh, to Wine, Len, excuse me, tribute to Ween and Cockrum. So obviously they're the artists. Uh, so that's why it's a panel by panel kind of uh, redoing of all the art by uh, contemporary or, or some, you know, some famous artists from around the way. All right, as I said, I got a bunch of these. Shang-Chi number one. I've been waiting and waiting for this for so long. And I picked up as many of the variants as I could. Uh, this one obviously is the regular cover uh, by Philip Tan. Features the first appearance of a bunch of uh, cats. I don't want to give it away, but it's been hot for a minute. This is the one I don't have, which is the Virgin variant, which is a 1 in 100. I missed out on that one. This is just the regular cover. So I hope to get that. That's in Yuk Lee. I did that cover. This one is a cover. Basically, Marvel pulled out all their Asian artists and said, oh, you want to do a Shang-Chi cover? They said, oh, yeah, let's do it. Uh, this, of course, is uh, Ron Lim. And I'll try to read the ratios if I can. This is by Kim Jacinto or Jacinto, depending on how you pronounce it, J-A-C-I-N-T-O. Uh, very cool, kind of exaggerated, almost animated graffiti style. This is a very interesting book that not many people probably know about. 
This is a Benjamin Sue variant. This is his first ever Marvel work, and he's um, he comes from the world of Pixar. He is a pay, uh, he is a Pixar animator, and this is his first ever Marvel cover. I don't know if he's ever done any DC covers, but this is his first ever Marvel cover. So this is a variant by Benjamin Sue from Pixar. Pretty cool. This is Rudy Nibrez. I think I said that right. Forgive me if I butcher your name. This is a hidden gem variant. This is the old school Shang-Chi guy. He's got the headband, the crate, the pants. <laughs> uh, got his nunchucks, so that's cool. I was a little disappointed in this one, man. Uh, this is one of my favorite artists, and uh, I think they should have gave him more to work with. Jim Chung, uh, basically the, everybody's seen these for the design variant. This is a 1 in 10 variant, so I'm not too crazy about the new costume, man. I, I, give me the old school, you know, karate gi, or as the kids say. Uh, this is should be more important, I think, um, since it features... This is one of the books that features the first appearance on the cover. This, of course, is the fabulous Filipino artist Miko Siwan. Uh, this, I believe, is a 1 in 25 variant. Miko Siwan. Look at that. That's pretty dope. Here's another gorgeous one. First cover appearance. This is by Jen Bartel. And this is a 1 in 50 uh, ratio variant. And there's more. One of my favorite artists, as I already said. This is an Art Adams 1 in 50 variant. Very cool. And last but not least, this is the uh, DK or Dyke Rion variant the reason this one's getting so much play because it features all the uh, characters first appearances on there but just so you know it's not the only one as these also feature his sister there and also that dude there so maybe all three of them man you know you know get all three but right now this seems to be the hot one because it features all of them they're all inside on the internal pages but this is where you see them all together on the cover and then these are the other covers where they also appear on them as well so I hope you enjoyed the uh, video. Comment below which ones were your favorites. What did you pick up? And uh, I will see you next time. We have a loaded week next week. Monday, going to have a long-term spec list. Tuesday is going to be the cover price top 10. And then I think either Wednesday or Thursday, another. We're going to have a two-part long-term spec list. As well as I'm eventually going to show off these 16 slabs before the second shipment comes in. So I appreciate you guys watching. If you're new to the channel, make sure you sub, like, and all that good stuff. Until next time, boys and girls, keep digging in them long boxes. Peace out.